Describing circular motion is not that difficult. The brief overview in this video should help to understand the topic. Let's start with defining the frequency. There are two formulas available. If k is the number of cycles and t the time it takes for them to complete, then we get the frequency by dividing k by t. The unit of the frequency is 1 over second, or simply hertz. Hence the frequency can also be calculated with 1 over capital T, where capital T means the total time for one cycle. A small example. If an object completes a circle 5 times in one second, then this motion has a frequency of 5 Hz. In mathematics and physics, angles are always measured counterclockwise and given in radian as well as degree. 2 times pi matches 360 degrees, 1 pi the half, so 180 degrees, and pi over 2, again half of that, that's 90 degrees. To compute the outer distance of a circle, the formula phi equals s over r is quite helpful. Rearranging the equation provides the circumference of a semicircle of 180 degrees or mathematically 1 times pi. Assuming that the circle has a radius of 1, the circumference purely and simply has the length of 1 times pi. Now for the interesting part of circular motion. The angular velocity omega governs how fast objects are moving on the circuit. Four quite similar looking formulas can be used for calculating the angular velocity. Depending on what is given in the problem, either formula can be more suitable. Let's assume the object in motion has a frequency of 5 Hz. Then the resultant angular velocity is of 2 times pi times 5, or approximately 31 radian per second. To figure out the amount of velocity our object is moving with, there is just the angular velocity to be multiplied by the radius of the circle. In our case, the circle has a radius of 1 meter, hence the velocity equals 31 meters per second. As the radius increases, the velocity of the object increases as well, because the object has to travel a longer distance in the same time of circulation. What keeps the object in the circle though? Why doesn't it just fly away tangent to the circle, that's where the red arrow is pointing, with its previously mentioned velocity? The so-called centripetal acceleration, which is vectored to the circle's center, keeps the object from flying away. The often misconceived centrifugal acceleration is just a fictitious one, and used when intentionally the centripetal acceleration and the force respectively is meant. There are two equations available for calculating the centripetal acceleration. This quantity is also directly related to the radius of the circle, and after what we've learned so far, that's even logical. We need a lower acceleration to keep an object on a smaller circle than on a bigger circle with the same frequency. The radial acceleration can be calculated either by radius times angular velocity squared or by velocity squared over radius. In our case, that's 961 meters per second squared. So what about the forces acting? Forces are calculated by multiplying the object's mass with its acceleration and have the unit Newton. Let's say our object has a mass of 1 kilogram. In Central Europe, the acceleration due to gravity is of about 9.81 meters per second squared, or in other words, 9.81 newton per kilogram. So the weight of the object is 9.81 newton, directed downwards. Since the radial acceleration of our object is 961 meters per second squared, the amount of the centripetal force is 961 newton. To compensate for the weight of the object pointing downwards now, we need to introduce a third force. This could be for example a force on a rope attached to our object responsible for the circular motion. According to the Pythagorean theorem, the magnitude of the force is the square root of the sum of the weight squared and the centripetal force squared. With these simple steps, circular motion and the forces acting can be described.